Yeah, we won. Yeah. Come on, you guys. It's over. We did it. Come on, you guys. We won. We, we did it. We beat the game. But at what price? Price? I mean, it was a cost of a board game. Though. Just don't get it, do you? What's there to get? There is no winning. It's perpetual war. No peace. Only an eternity of carnage and slaughter and the laughter of thirsty gods. With the game, I could have been a tech priest engineer or a sanctioned psyker. Now I'm just a broken down piece of meat. You realize this is a fictional world, right? Like, none of this is real. And besides, you could end up a, a slave to chaos or a, a filthy ogre. What does anything even matter when I'm just going to become one of the thousands of souls sacrificed every day to the God Emperor? Jesus, you guys, it's fictional. Just don't get it, do you? Thousands of souls. I have no idea what's going on right now. I won't be one of them! Relic is a fun, rollicking adventure game for you and your friends in which you pick your favorite heavy metal parody and blast aliens, mutants, and heretics, all the while escaping from the pain that is normal life. Yes, you and three of your friends will traverse through the Warhammer 40k universe, collecting relics, leveling up, and crushing enemies under your boots to eventually travel to the center of the warp and test your might against the gods of chaos themselves. If you buy the Nemesis expansion, you can have a grand total of six players at once, two of which can turn traitor to the Imperium of Man and play as Agents of Chaos or an alien foe from beyond the stars. As you move around the board, you'll draw cards for random events. You might find an ally or pick up a new item or have a terrible unfortunate event happen, but you'll mostly be fighting enemies. You'll use cunning, strength, or willpower to defeat them, and each character is better suited to each type of challenge. It's like high school. For example, the nerdy psyker uses his brain to outwit enemies, the ogren jock flexes on dudes, and the rattling sniper is like, um, is like a goth kid or something. The metaphor falls apart there, but uh, he uses cunning. Each character plays a little differently, and that along with the different scenarios help keep the game fresh and vibrant. It's not bland. The scenarios can drastically change your goals. They can change the game from being cooperative to competitive by encouraging players to fight one another, or split the players into two separate teams, or force you to take down a massive boss encounter of sorts. Veterans of the board game Underground will know that Relic is a redesign of the much older game Talisman. It even says so on the box. The primary difference between the two games is that Relic gives players far more agency to control their fate. It's more dynamic in movement, character development, and combat thanks to an extended range of choices the player is given. Remember when I said Relic is a fun rollicking adventure for you and your friends? I lied. Relic is not a party game. Players have to be hardcore just to be able to tell what the board is. The game is technical and will take a good several hours of gameplay to grasp all the concepts. As with all Fantasy Flight products, the art is beautiful and the build quality of the parts is great, although there are about 400 little pieces to punch out of cardboard, assemble, and promptly lose or get eaten by your cat. The board is a bit cluttered, and it gets further complicated with cards that stay on the board, combined with the sometimes unclear borders between spaces. At its worst, it looks like a mashup of various bolt thrower album covers. One element of the game that is iconic to both Warhammer and Warhammer 40k is the concept of being corrupted by the forces of evil. As you play the game, you run the risk of being tainted by the warp. This might cause you to gain helpful abilities, like having an extra appendage, or do harm, like cause your dick to fall off, or just straight up kill you. That is, after attaining a certain level of corruption, your character will meet a fate worse than death. They'll become unplayable, forcing you to start over with a new character. This is literally worse than death, literally, as losing all of your health in the game carries relatively light consequences. The combat system is fairly straightforward. An enemy attacks you using one of the aforementioned three types, you compare numbers with them, use equipment if need be to increase your numbers, and throw in a dice roll to see who has the highest total. 
You can also use special abilities to affect combat, and these vary from character to character. If you're losing especially hard, there's always a chance that your dice can explode. If this happens, usually by rolling a 6, you get the chance to roll again and add your numbers. If you continue rolling 6s, the numbers keep adding up. The same can happen with enemy dice rolls, and this can lead to some shocking defeats or unexpected victories, which help keep things fresh. Mission cards are a helpful tool to give players a compass in short-term progression. They give objectives which will inevitably lead you to farming the board. But more importantly, once three missions are completed, you can draw and choose a Relic card, which is required to enter the final stage of the board. However, missions can become frustrating since chance is the deciding factor in their completion. The Nemesis expansion's major contribution is glorious player versus player action. This comes about through the ability to play as a titular Nemesis, which encompasses Warhammer 40k's typical antagonists and new equipment cards that encourage friendly trades. Playing as a Nemesis can be lots of fun, but it has much less late game depth than normal characters. Nemesis brings PvP to the forefront and gives it a strategic imperative. The game is at its absolute best when you have a full group of six players. It's tough to get into at first, but if you're a Warhammer 40k fan, the rewards are absolutely worth it. The Nemesis expansion mostly improves PvP aspects, but new characters and apostate gear and all that jazz make it worth buying even if PvP isn't your thing. With that being said, if you're not a fan of the setting and you can't get at least four players together who are willing to devote several hours per game, Relic may not strike your fancy. But if you've got a few friends who are willing to sacrifice their lives in service of the Emperor, we'd recommend it. <laughs>